God will get you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Maud is owned by Shout Factory. God will get you for that, Walter. Is produced for entertainment purposes only. Sponsored in part by Finley's Friendly Appliances. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of God Will Get You For That, Walter. My name is Tom Cat, and I am joined by my fabulous co-host... Tony Homeperm. And today, we watched The Flashback. Flashback. Season 1, Episode 8, recorded and aired October 31st, 1972. Wow. What <laughs> an episode. Yes. Very, um... Very politically heavy... Uh, before we even mention that, there is a special guest. His name is Henry, and he is played by the one and only Van Johnson. Yes, we were. Who was, who was very popular during the 50s. Yes, yes. And we were like, wait, who is that? We, <laughs> I, I, who did I say it was? Red, I thought it was initial that it was Red Skelton. Red Skelton, yes. And then I was like, no, that's not Red not Skelton. Not Red Skelton, no. But it was but Van Johnson. Still teeth. I think yes. Red Skelton, I think teeth and red hair, so that's why I thought, like, Van Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, all those old Hollywood actors all had great teeth. All had fantastic teeth. I don't, yeah. I don't know if they were caps or veneers oh, or I'm sure, I'm if sure they were real. real. <laughs> yeah, those, you know, the studios back then, if they put you in a contract, it was like, the, you know, they loved you, then the first thing they wanted to do was change, change everything, ha- everything, everything about, about you. you. Hair color, teeth. Eyes. Yeah. Any, any, I mean, look at they what could. they put. Look at what they did to Joan Crawford and Judy mm. Garland. Oh God! Judy yeah. Garland was on those diet pills. Mm-hmm. They removed, like I think, the back four four molars oh. on Joan Crawford. They called it the buckle. Oh, did they? And uh huh. I didn't know that. They they what you called? They did it so that it would give your it would make your face look slender, hmm. and it would give you like higher cheekbones. I've already had my molars out, but can I take? Can I? You take can more go right out? ahead and take more out. I'll take right up to the incisors. <laughs> if it, if it makes my face look thinner. <laughs> oh my god. Don't die during a podcast. <coughs> I mean, unless it gets us more, more unless views. Unless it gets us more views. Then it's okay. Then it's fine. I mean, again, look uh, what happened to Judy Garland. One of oh, the, that one yeah. record where she, like, choked on stage. And people were just like, I... People actually went to, like, FYE and places. They're like, I would love the Judy Garland record where she almost dies on almost stage. Dies on stage. Like... Yes. Collector item. <laughs> um, my husband and I, we actually uh, had a friend. Yeah, he had one of her dresses. I would die. Yeah, he had he had one of her dresses. Which one? I, I don't I don't know which one it was. Not 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 a very famous one, but it, apparently he was friends with like the chauffeur, and somehow the I don't know how the chauffeur got a dress. But I mean, she was tiny. The dress was so small because this was like. You know, late later in in life, like, and um, she was so gaunt. I mean, this dress was was like, I mean, may, I could maybe it wouldn't fit our calves. No, not I mean, probably not even our calves. It yeah. wouldn't fit our ankles. No, <laughs> barely. You know, yeah, it was tiny. So the episode is called the flashback, and it, that is exactly what it is. The episode mm-hmm. starts, however, in 1972. The ele- election night. The, uh, it's election night, and it is Nixon and McGovern. Um, unfortunately, I don't know much of McGovern's policies or po- or what he would have promised the American people. I, I remember right? Nixon being president, but I, I don't remember, I really don't remember the election. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, it was, uh, honestly, like, you were probably the same age that I was when, um, Clinton was being put into in, office. In 72, I was, let's see. I was only eight. Yeah. Same here. I might have even, actually, that was before my birthday. But I was probably only seven. Yeah, so, that's that's right around the same age that I was so with Clinton. I was, I was I was very 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 young. We were young at that point in time. Yes. Well, I wasn't even a thought of you. That. No, you were you were nothing. I was no- <laughs> you were nothing. <laughs> I was nothing. You're nothing before me. And now I'm something. <laughs> something. I don't know what I am. But the it, it does this this episode does lean very heavily in in politics land. Yes. Um, because as Maud and Walter are discussing the election, who should walk in the door mm-hmm. but Arthur? Arthur, of course. Because um, the way the episode starts is 
Maud and Walter are going over the election, and I think Walter says they were. What what state were they uh, saying where McGovern was oh, I, losing? Oh, I don't remember. But it was like it was like some little town. There was like some little town in Michigan. Four I think. for four votes for Nixon and s- no, six, six for Nixon. Vo- four six for McGovern. For Nixon, four for McGovern. So. And and Maud so is just like, yeah, bereft yeah, of yeah, green. Like, McGovern is guy. You really do exist. Get even with me. Right. Right. Um. And of course, Arthur then enters because naturally, and yes. says, "How you like in the election? It's what was it? Six for uh, uh, four for McGovern and six for America. Six for America. Yes. Because of course, Arthur is very Republican, conservative, yes. and Maud is a very liberal Democrat. Democrat. Yes. Um, and they're just they're going over." Whatever it is that they're discussing. Or not. They also mentioned socialized medicine. Yeah. Which nowadays is now known as Medicare for All. Yeah. So it's like, once again, the show that aired 50 years ago. Right. It'll be 50 years ago next October. Mm-hmm. So 50 years ago was also going over socialized medicine and Medicare yeah. for All. Yeah. Why are we still having these conversations? Why are we still in the same boat? Yes. America, the the land where we have the best medical treatments and procedures available that most of the population cannot afford. Cannot afford. Yeah, isn't that a great thing? It's fantastic. Yes. Really. What a what a what a great thing that. Every is. other every other country in the free world has socialized medicine, has Medicare for all, has it where you don't have to spend an arm, a leg, and a firstborn child in order to have a medical procedure. Right. At, wh- why are we so behind? I know why we're so behind. It's the same reason why Arthur doesn't want socialized medicine, because right. it will just mean cheaper, it'll just mean cheaper labor. Right. And uh, d- doctors need to be paid too. Right. So it, it, it's it's just, it's... <sighs> it's so frustrating. It is frustrating. It's genuinely so frustrating. But I think that was that was something that Humphreys was for. Humphreys was for socialized medicine. Probably. I don't. Um, I don't know what his platform was. I mean, years I, ago, years ago, socialism was looked at as very bad. Yeah. Like if you were a socialist, you were like annexed. You not annexed. You were um, ostracized from any and all groups. Don't you love how people will be will be like, oh, we don't, we don't, we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to live in a socialist country. Oh, but. They want to get their social security check. They want to get social security checks. Uh, they, want, they want their benefits. They want disability. They want all the, all of these socialist programs that without them, they'd be screwed. There was uh, one, uh, a relative of Frank's mm-hmm. who, who she was going on about how she hated liberals. She hated liberals. I'm like, well, let me think about it now. Um, as a woman, if it wasn't for liberals, you wouldn't be able to vote. You wouldn't be able to voice an opinion about uh, uh, social policies. Uh, you wouldn't be getting your social security. You wouldn't have a forty-hour work week. There wouldn't be such a thing as overtime. I, I, I mean, all the, all these. You know, the reason you have all these things is because of liberals. Hello, yes, it's because of socialism. Yeah, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for that, you there'd still be child labor. Uh, Workhouses and uh, did you speak of servitude? Speaking I don't know. of child labor, did you see the article of that one father who was praising and applauding his fourteen-year-old son who was working in Burger King forty hours a week? This child was working. Why praising? Oh, my child is working. My child is doing this. My child is doing so well. Why? Why is a child not being, why is a child unable to be a child? It begs the question, what is too young to work? Well, uh, un- unfortunately, the child nowadays probably does need to do that in order to, to pay for college. Yeah, because, I guess so. Uh, you know, unless they they want to take out student loans oh, that are going to be like, it's it's ridiculous. I'll I mean, be as old as Tony one day and still be paying my, my student loans. Probably. Just, it's it's really, really upsetting that we live in this country of plenty, and there's not plenty for the plenty. Right. There's there's just not. And right. it's... <sighs> it's one of those cartoons where the, the, there's the, you know, very large, obese person with, you know, the big bowl of food, and there's like, you know... A, a child that's, you know, gaunt and emaciated just just staring at it. That's kind of like... 
where America, we're out, America, the, 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 the working class is the tiny, emaciated, gaunt child. Exactly. And and the fat cats are the the large, obese individual who is eating out of the bowl. Exactly. Just. This is oh my god! Oh my. Exactly. This is such an interesting country. <sighs> but let's continue because we could talk about that. We could talk about hour. that for the whole hour. Uh, so Arthur complains. Arthur complains. Humphrey over Nixon against socialist medicine, Democrats and Republicans. Ah, mentioned Nixon's secret plan to end the war. End the war. Yes, in, in six months. Holy Toledo! Does does that like, like it? I remember watching this episode, and I remember getting shivers down yeah. my spine because of how similar yeah. it was to where we are right now. Right, it's a it's a president who feels that there's there's going to be this this giant secret that he's not going to tell anybody, oh. and it's going to fix everybody's oh, problems. Oh, yeah. And it, uh, just where am I? Where am I? Trump was saying, oh, we're going to have the best Medicare in the world. Like, Trump care is going to be wonderful. He didn't tell anybody about it. No. We still don't know what this medicine plan was. I still have no clue what it it was about. And I can guarantee you it was the same thing with Nixon back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. He had this secret plan that nobody was supposed to know about. Mm -hmm. And it was probably nothing. I mean, I don't even remember exactly when the war in Vietnam officially ended. But I mean... I don't think it was till after um, Ford took off. Probably. Uh, Hold on, now we're going to... So now, now we're going, now to, we're actually going to actually look, look this up. This up. The, the end, end date... April 30th, 1975. 75. So, 75. So that's when... So we're, we're three years off from the yeah. war. Yeah. So it was within... Yeah. I think it... No. It was within... When did... All right, now we need to... Was it, was it during Car- Carter's? Uh, I don't think it was during Carter. It was, I think, right after Nixon resigned. Well, that would, that would have been, that would have been yeah. Ford. Ford took th- over. Then that would be, yeah, Nixon. it would be Ford. Yeah, that I do, that I do remember. That, for some reason, I, rem- I remember vividly. Because the, the whole, whole... The whole world the was whole, going yeah, crazy. The whole world was like, you know... Yeah. So... That I remember. That's, that's what ended up happening in the Vietnam War. Ended yes. because Ford became president. <laughs> yes. And... Oh my god, Saturday Night Live when Chevy Chase would like uh, do his impression of him, like con- falling over. And it was so funny. I mean, he didn't even like, like nowadays on Saturday Night Live, they, they'll do, you know, hair and makeup and everything and manner- mannerisms. To Before try to imitate. it was if you looked close enough to the president and you sounded, if you looked close enough to these celebrities and you sounded enough like them, they just put you on and that was the yeah, end of it. Yeah, but Chevy Chase, he didn't even do, you know, he didn't even, he just put on a suit and they were like, you know, and here's, you know, President Ford, and he would just, like, you know, take fall a... Fall over. Fall over and take his... And it was hysterical. There was, there was actually a... Um, I remember watching Tony Fields years ago, and even presently, because I, I absolutely adore the woman. And at the time, she had... Um, at the time, she had her leg amputated, mm-hmm. and she was in her special. I think it's on location with Tony Fields. Right. Um, she ended up reading these, like, thank you cards uh-huh. and, like, congratulatory cards and whatnot. And I think if, I'm not, if I remember specifically, she says, "I'm reading this one to impress you. Uh-huh. Don't worry if you fall down. I didn't became president. Oh, Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's a hoot. But um, That's a hoot. But yeah, so Arthur was mentioning Nixon's secret plan, mm-hmm. and um, just there was a lot of back and forth between." Maud and Arthur. Yes. Because there's always, especially in political... Yeah, when it came, came to politics, they were just oil and water. Very much so. Very much so. And we actually find out during this episode that Arthur was the one who introduced, introduced Maud and Walter. Maud and Walter. Well, it's kind of weird, because Arthur is the neighbor who lives next door. Yeah. He had been friends with Walter for years, but Arthur was living next, next door to, to Maud. To so it's just weird that, you know, that's how it worked out. But I guess, I guess it makes sense that, you know, he figured... Because I'm, try- I'm trying to remember in other episodes of, like, if it's ever mentioned that uh, Walter would become friendly with, you know, Maud being neighbors and whatnot. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Arthur mentioned a few times how Maud's been married yes. several times to yes. different partners. Um, so it stands to, like, if you're neighbors with somebody, you're obviously going to know what your neighbor's going through, especially mm-hmm. during the 70s when it was like, 
the thing to do. And yes. you would just know your neighbors. Yes. Nowadays, no, it's like, not today. not today. Not today. I already put the down payment up on the, the fence that I'm having enclosed <laughs> in my properties. You did? Congratulations! I, did. I, did. I don't ever so. want to see them, hear them, know them. Deal with them. <laughs> I get yep. it. I Closing get them it. out. As you should. As I should. As you should. Um, so, so let's get to the flashback. Let's get to the flashback. So as uh, Arthur exits, he says, he ends up saying China will be in the United Nations. Right. Just more, more stupid, stupid stuff from Arthur. And then we get to the flashback. And we oh, flashback we, we did to, almost, we did, is that, is that when, um, yes, we get to the, we get to the flashback. And then yeah, it's they, after he leaves and then Maud and Walter are going back and forth. Like, remember how we first started dating the last election? Yes. So they started dating in 68. Yes. So we flash back to 1968, and we're in we're in Maud's house. Her hairstyle is much darker. So is Walter's. So is what Walter actually had hair on his head. Yes, um, and he was wearing this very attractive blue suit with the yellow turtleneck sweater. Yes, it was a very attractive outfit yes. for him. And uh, you know, Maud was in her pantsuit. Of course. That's not going to change. <clears throat> that that's never going to change. Yes. But so now, now it's it now it's uh, Nixon. Running against Humphreys. Humphreys, yes. I, mean, I remember noth- nothing about nothing. About you were in was, you were in diapers. I was only like three. You so were in diapers. I have no no recollection of that. And and Arthur comes back in again, and he's mad because Maud pasted a Humphreys sticker over his Nixon sticker on his car. Well, but even before that, we Carol comes downstairs. No. Doesn't she, or is no, that after? That's after. It's after? That's okay, after. Then, then you wrote down more notes than I did. I did. I did. <laughs> so, Arthur, yes, comes in in a huff because that was exactly what Maud did. Maud mm-hmm. pasted a Humphrey sticker over his Nixon bumper mm-hmm. sticker. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's actually at, at, during this in 68 where Arthur brings up Nixon saying he's going to end the war. Yeah. In three years. So, it was like... Even uh, six months, that right? Yes. So, so it was back the, in so sixty eight, it was back in sixty eight that he the, was going to fix the end of the war. End the war in six months, and as we know, even in in, in the next election, it, it still didn't. had to be done, it and it didn't even happen during his uh, term. It wasn't until just Ford took over after he resigned. It really is unfortunate that Trump was the combination of two of our worst presidents. He really, he really was just a combination of Nixon. And Reagan with just a drop of, um, oh God, what was that? Gambino. Yeah. Yeah. Just a drop of mobster. Trump, Trump's uh, presidency to me is like, um, it, it could be, uh, it could be, the, uh, the, the epitome of it would be uh, the music from uh, Chicago, the song, Give Them um, the Old. Razzle, yeah. dazzle. That's that's that's, whole, that's exactly. I it. can't sing too much. But I mean, if it, it we'll be the, demonetized. We'll be. <laughs> it was the same thing with Nixon mm-hmm. and 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 Reagan, where he would ju- they would just promise the world. Yeah. Look, look at what I'm doing with this hand, and don't and look, don't look what I'm doing with this hand. The hand behind my back. Exactly. So, yes. Oh, democratic socialist. Yes. Vote vote liberal. Any who's will be so <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> Arthur, he he leaves, and, you know, Walter wants to get romantic. Yes, Walter does want to get romantic. Now, here's where the episode shifts a little bit in meaning, because now we're no longer focusing on the politics of it. We're focusing on the meat and potatoes of what's going on. the relationship. We're focusing on the relationship. And, um... Well, go ahead. You have more notes than I do. Well, Maud says, you know, there's there's a a problem. Uh, Apparently... She then tells Walter that, you know, Carol and Philip are upstairs. Oh, that's right. Thank you because for pointing that Carol out. Carol just, just moved in. She just moved in. She just recently divorced. divorced or I don't know if she was I don't know if she was divorced at that point or it was getting you know, she divorce. was going through the divorce. She's going through, she the, was divorce. Going through the divorce. So, you know, one has let her move Come in. Back. You know, so, so which now we know that Carol's been there for Quite a long time now since yeah. she moved in in '68, and where and present day Maud is in '72. So, but I mean that's that has become normal nowadays, where kids will come back home, whether well, it's, whether it's because of whether it's because of emotional strife, whether it's because of financial hardships. 
Like, parents are not going to turn their kids away. Most young adults, on Long Island anyway, can't afford their own place. And this is in Tuck- This is in Westchester. This yeah. is in Westchester County. Yeah. Uh, upstate New York. Right. And, you know, I'm almost assuredly assuming that it was relatively not not nearly as expensive as it is now. I don't. Th- I do not think that it was. A, as a matter of fact, no. there was an episode that Maud bought them a house for thirty eight thousand mm. dollars. Where in this country can you buy a house, not an apartment, a house for thirty eight thousand dollars? You can't get like a storage unit. <laughs> for that. Actually, I saw somebody. They have those Home Depot like like storage units that I think they're about. Um, Two hundred and fifty bucks, yeah. and somebody actually converted one into a, into like a like a tiny house. Isn't that sad? It's sad. It's it was it's cute. So it was cute though. I, I, you know, I, I see a lot of these posts on Facebook where it's like, I could live in this tiny house. I could live in this. I could live in that. And I'm like, sure you can. Well, not very long. <laughs> um, well, definitely not if you're a drag queen. I can, oh Jesus I can Christmas! No, I could I could fill that so place many, just with my wigs. Just with the wigs. <laughs> You with the wigs, me with the fabric. Just, I mean, it just would It's a lot. It it's a work. lot. Being a creative in a small uh, house is not fun. Uh, um, so Carol moves back home. This is in 68. She is going through a divorce. And Philip's probably only like... A baby. A baby. Probably, yeah. So... He's only about seven or eight and 70. Yeah. So actually, that actually, yeah. So Philip would have been... Four around there, four or five. Yeah, three or four. I'm three, sorry. Yeah, I think, I think Philip would have actually been my age because I remember, like in '72, one of the the Doctor Doctor episodes. Yeah. He said he was eight, and I think that's how old I was. So, you know, whatever Philip is in the you series, could have been Philip. I could have been Philip. You yes. could have been Philip. I could have been Philip. <laughs> yes. Uh, so now Maud, you know she's. She's grabbing Walter. She's grabbing Walter. They're being amorous. They're being very romantic. You know, and but very, she's, she's like, you know, uh, honey, if 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 you if, if you, you don't, don't vote, vote in this election, in this election. Hum, I, who I, Humphreys is going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. and it's one of those things where it's like, Maud, Maud, your boyfriend is hugging and kissing you. Why are you still focusing on the election? Yeah, hello, but. But she is. She is. Yes. And she and, and you know, for a woman during the seventies to be that politically invested, very rare to see on television. Oh God, yeah. Very rare to see a woman so so heavily politically invested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, she was the first. Yeah. She was the first. I don't think that I honestly do not think there was ever a woman con- ever a woman character so so politically invested as Maud. Yeah. Bef- before Maud, I'm saying. Before, before Maud. Maud. Uh, you would see things like where, um, at least in sitcoms, where, where uh, take I Love Lucy, for instance, where somebody's yeah. running for, like, president of, the, of the, the social club and things like that. But you never saw anything that was really... You never saw anything above that. You know, about real, uh, real politics. So th- now we experience... What in in the Maud and Walter relationship yes. is is the very first time of Walter telling Maud to sit to down. sit Maud sit yeah and she's stunned and taken aback and and does it and then she questions why did I sit yeah I, I sat yeah what did I do that for and she immediately just goes from being amorous and romantic to screaming at Walter to get out of her house. Yeah, because she's petrified. Because she's scared. Because she realized... Because that made her realize she was in love with him. And she was in love with Walter. And again, it sort of is interesting to point out how that's not how you tell somebody you love them. No. You don't yell at somebody to sit down and then that immediately triggers some type of dopamine in your brain. No, 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 no. no. None of that. No. But, Uh, unless you're wearing leather. I... She said it, I did. <laughs> Little Folsom Street East. It's, it's, it's been known to happen. 
Tell little, me I'm wrong. Little Folsom and all of us. Tell, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying oh. a word. So, Not yes. anything that could be used against me. In a so she's war. got. She's order. She orders Walter out. Orders Walter immediately out of the house, and yes. Carol races downstairs. Who is in this very adorable hair? Do yes, for very her. like late sixties. Very late sixties. Yes, she's very cute. Um, I need that. I need that hair. You do. You do need that I hair. Need that honestly, hair. I, will, I will have that hair. You, <laughs> I need sure it, you will. and I will have it. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You will, and indeed she will. Um, I'm like I'm like Ariana Grande. See it, want it, buy it, buy it. You know, well, you don't want it, to buy it. It's make, probably... hu- make husband make it. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> somewhere in the basement. Now. Probably, probably. So it's Carol probably. comes downstairs and she is. You know, I am so glad that this sitcom had Maud's daughter be sort of the logical center of mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, because you know how in Golden Girls, Dorothy was like. The logical thinker, yes. the one who would always put things in perspective for people. Right. Maud was Maud. Maud yeah. was all over the place. Maud was very scatterbrained. There was even an episode where we went over Maud's manic depressive episodes. Right. And Carol, being Maud's daughter, definitely was her emotional crutch. Yes. And, you know, seeing your mother go through, at this point, three husbands, and now seeing your mother now amorous with another individual it, it's definitely it's definitely an interesting relationship that the two of them have mm-hmm. like i i really do i really do love the relationship between maud and carol yes so so <clears throat> maud has to explain to carol that uh she's upset because she's in in love with walter and she a career divorcee yes yeah, she's a career divorcee she doesn't she does not want to get married again she's struck out three times already I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't know. For me, if I, if I fail once, I might want to try again. Mm -hmm. But for someone like Maud, who's done it three times, I can understand why she would be, why she would be afraid. Mm -hmm. I think it's very obvious for a woman of her years, especially during the late 60s, to not only have gone through three husbands, but to now potentially think of having a, a fourth. Right. That's it's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. How about you? Uh, you know, I've I've always wondered maybe maybe it would be better if marriages were like a, a contract for only like a certain amount of years. <laughs> a lease on your own. Yeah. Spouse. Yes. <laughs> and then after five years, it's like oh, you know, the the marriage <laughs> lease is kind of. Do you do you want to renew it or you know, do you want to trade me in for a newer model? <laughs> a lot simpler. It would make things very interesting. It would, so it's know. like for those five years, we, we're, we're, significant, we're, we're, we're spouses, and then as soon as the five years is over, it's like, you want to renew? Right, exactly. <laughs> you want to renew your marriage? And if you, in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, I could see that happening. I mean, I mean, and, and then you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to like go through the expense of divorce or, or anything. It would just be like... It would just be the end of it. Yeah. Like see, the, the see contract now, would stipulate that. See, now, years ago, before... You know, gay marriage. Uh-huh. Like a gay couple, you know, we couldn't get married. They had, uh, didn't they have civil unions, or was no, that it? no? Wasn't I, even civil they unions. would, you know, they would have. There were times where they would have a wedding, but you weren't legally married. It wasn't. It didn't. It meant nothing legally, yeah. and but for the most part, a gay couple, you just you just moved in together. Yeah, you just lived together. And if it, roommate, if, it, if, it didn't, if it didn't work out, you took your clothes and your gay porn collection and you and you left. And, and that was the and end that, of it. That was the end of it. Um, but now, of course, I mean, I will I will say this. This is a bit of a this is a bit of a um, a big issue that a lot of people are pointing out. We will not have full marriage equality until people with disabilities will not lose their disabilities when marrying their significant other. Yes, uh, my husband knew a couple that were were married and ended up um, getting divorced. Yeah, just so they could both continue to get their full um, uh, disability benefits. Yeah. Benefits. They still live together, but were no longer legally. It's so sad. Husband and wife. It's so sad. I. Know, it's crazy. It's. It's just. It doesn't make any sense. You're. You. You. you you're penalized for getting married, but then, you know, if, if you aren't married, 
um, there's there's so many things that you know you could um, uh, not be allowed to do. Yeah. Like as far as like you know if you know the few times that like my husband had to go to the hospital, like I haven't had a problem. You know problem. They said who are you? I'm like I'm his husband. I'm his husband. We're legally married. Like, oh okay. And then you know there's. There's no ifs, ands, or buts yeah. that, I, you know, they're not going to tell me. Um, we did have one time before we were married where he had to go to the uh, emergency room for something. And the doctor, he was a real jerk, he, he, said to, he said to me, you know, I was waiting with me. And he said, oh, who are you? I said, I'm his partner. And he said, well, you have to wait outside. And, you know, oh, no. Frank was, he was like, you know, he was, his stomach was really bad. He was in two Bad, he didn't even realize what was going on. And when I told him about it afterwards, he said, I didn't even realize he said that. I would have told him to, like, go to hell. Um, but, you know. I just said worse. You know, but as it stands now, um, there's, I've never had any problem with, you know, like when he had his hernia surgery and, and things like that um, about being you know, you know, it, in the room. Up until, up until, I remember watching an episode of Grey's Anatomy. Where a, um, it was someone in the military that was trying, was having a surgical procedure done and their partner wasn't allowed Mm -hmm. to be in the waiting room, in the recovery, in the recovery area. And I I remember, I I, I vaguely, vaguely do I remember this, but I remember that the, that it was two, it was two men in the military Mm -hmm. and they were a couple. And they had told him, because you're not married, you can't, right. you can't come into whatever, right. whatever, whatever, whatever. Somehow they managed to do it in the end. And I remember clear as daylight. I was watching it, and then they started kissing. And then I looked at my mother, who was grimacing at the television. Oh. So that was a tip for me. Oh. Um, Were you out at that point? Not at all. Oh. I was not out in the slot. I was, like, so happy that I was seeing this this out gay couple on, on television but then to see my mother react that way, it was like, oh well, I'm not saying I'm right. not saying nothing now. Right. Jeez. Oh, so we've we've come over heaps and bounds we've, since then. Well, that's good. But that's but good. still, but of you course, know, as a as a young person, when you know, on the one hand, a, a parent, you know, will will say, oh, you know, I love you, I love you no matter what and all that. But then when you see something that like that, you like, oh, you know, you say you love you me out of it no matter what. But is there a but is there a, a but you're not uh-huh. you're not telling me like if you know yeah. and the, the crazy thing is like people will you know they'll they'll let kids get a pass for like doing you know horrible things like you know murder and they still support the kid and they're they're going to visit them in jail but you know they'll they were, kick I, them I, out but not to say if they're gay, gay and on the disown them not not to take away from the episode but on the third time that I had come out I wrote them a letter wrote my family a letter and it was very emotional it was mm-hmm. a very emotional letter that i wrote them and i remember um writing in it something along the fact of sometimes i wish that you would be more grateful that i am not dealing drugs that right. i am not murdering anybody right. that i am not doing anything wrong to right. anybody else this is all about who i am and how i present myself mm-hmm. to the people that letter did not go over well. I'm sure it didn't. But but again, leaps and bounds, friends. It but, does it does get better. But it's sort the truth. of. It's the truth. It does get better, sort of. So back to the episode. So Carol is. Uh, she suggests that they live that together. They live together. Right. Which, Which was very uh, of the time. Yeah. It was very of the time. Like mm-hmm. the, like marriages were, I guess, on the decline in the seventies. Well, I think it was. You know, coming out of that free love yeah, thing. In and, the 60s, yes. Uh, people wanting to be uh, anti-disestablishment and not wanting to follow Well, that, yeah, this is also late 60s, so that, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah, so, so and, and actually, nowadays, most people I know live together before they get married. They get married anyway. anyway. So, I mean, that's, honestly, that's what a lot of people have told me, specifically, um, when it comes to a relationship where it's like, sometimes it's better to live with your partner for a couple of years to find out if you really can, if you're simpatico, yeah. if you're compatible. And that does make a lot of sense. It does. And it saves a lot of headache and a lot oh, yeah. of heartache. Yeah. And, and a lot of expense, like I yeah. said. 
if you you're married and then decide you want to get, get divorced, I mean, marriage is easy. Divorce, divorce is hard. Divorce is hard. Divorce, divorce is complicated. Divorce is expensive. And you don't know a person until you divorce them. No, you don't. Because you don't know how cutthroat or how ruthless or how money hungry or how psychotic they actually are until those papers are like presented to them. That's right. And also there are times even when spouses will have um, extraneous bank accounts mm-hmm. where it will be like, Oh well, we're gonna go. Th- we're gonna- we're divorcing now. Let's let's go through all of our assets, and yeah, you find like, that your partner has like squirreled away, or, or they put like two and three mortgages on the on the home, yeah. and you didn't know about it. I mean, there's all oh, it's a lot. There's a lot. It's a lot. There is a lot. Okay, um, so that now now Maud, of course, has taken it back. You know, with the idea of living together. That's like you know, she's she's like, you know, we're not too. We're not two kids that we can live in a VW camper, <laughs> which is yeah. so like late late sixties. Yeah, and and that's when of course the doorbell rings and Walter has come back. Walter's already. come home, and um, you know he's 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 kissing her and she's pushing him away, and she and Maud is like very confused because she's like, oh, Walter, it's a right. to see you. Get away from me! I have no right. idea why are you doing this to me. And she loves him, but you know that she's she's. Petrified of being in love with him. him. Because because when you love somebody, it's like in Moonstruck, when they when you love them, they can drive you crazy. And that's that's just what it is. When you love when you love somebody, they they have they have power over you. Yeah, they do. They have power over you. I've I've been in love once or twice. Mm -hmm. It's You're not gonna break out of this song now. (laughs) (laughs) That would be it was a perfect moment. For it was the perfect moment for the joke. Who is Sylvia? <laughs> that would have been the perfect segue. That would have been the perfect segue. <laughs> no. Um, so Carol Carol ends up running upstairs, and Maud is like, wait, no, I need I need, an emo- I need my emotional grudge right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And, and Carol goes, I have to go talk to Phil a bit. And then Maud says, and to think I had you on purpose. Yeah, I think I had you on purpose. <laughs> How dare she? She's, you know, she's made jokes like that before. Like, to think I had you on purpose, um, and to think I had you legitimately. Um, there was another one where it was like, and to think, when you, when she swallowed marbles, I ended up spending three weeks, uh, three days shuffling through her toilet to find oh, it. Oh, God. my Lord. But again, that's the relationship between yes. a, mother a mother and, and daughter. daughter. Mother and child. So Maud still doesn't want to get married. And Arthur, she's, I mean, uh, honestly, like, yeah, you love you. You know, you love me. Let's get married. Then she says, "You know, I want, I want to live together." Because she's had three wipeouts, and Walter wants a permanent relationship. Yeah. And also, they use the word immoral a lot. Mm, yes, they use the word immoral. I think to avoid saying sleeping around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that was one of Walter's bigger concerns. Hmm. I think Walter was very concerned that if they were living together, that would mean that he wouldn't have, I guess, control over Maud. Yeah. And Maud can do as she pleased. Well, well, actually, when, when you think about it in the, in the broader aspect of this episode, yeah. showing that a couple were having relations before marriage was also something very you, you didn't yeah. see on television. As far as all television was concerned... You know, everyone was a virgin un- until they got married, and there was there was no hanky panky. And and here we see, you know, an adult man and adult woman who are having, you know, an adult relationship. I mean, but even even back then, they would call they wouldn't call making love uh, like it would not when they say making love. Even in the thirties and forties, making love was just making out. It wasn't. Having sex. Right. It wasn't making whoopee. Like, that's what they ended up calling it in the 70s, was making whoopee. Or even was it in the 60s no, they I, started using whoopee? No, I, I, I think it was quite earlier than that. Really? Like, well, yeah, making whoopee, I think, always meant, you know... Having sex. Having sex. Naturally. Making love. Like, you know, we see, when they talk about that in the 30s and 40s, and they, they sang about it and yes. all. Making love was, you know, just being romantic. Yeah, heavy petting. Like, no, 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 they didn't even mean that. They didn't really? Mean, yeah, no. When when you see like this, you know, forties starlet in a, in, a, in a gown and she's singing about making love, they, 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 
<laughs> there's no heavy petting. <clears throat> no, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean that would that would be you know the the, the you know the the man shows up for the date with a with a flower. I guess. You know it was you yeah, know yeah it, it does make you sense. You know not it not that the sense. whoopee didn't happen by any means. <laughs> Rest but assured, they friends, the you know, whoopee did in fact happen. It did It did happen, or else none of us would be here. But, <laughs> none of us would be here is true. But it was, you know, but when they were, you know, singing about it or talking about making love, it wasn't, you know, they didn't. Yeah. They they weren't meaning, the, you know, the dirty deed. Not yet, at least. That, you know, it could it could lead to that. And it could lead to Most the likely way. did, but they weren't. Yes, most assuredly. They was. weren't singing about it. And, of course, uh, more... Um, Maud is telling Arthur he's being, he's being like something out of the 19th century because mid century, uh, uh, stuffed shirt, mid century, a uh, mid Victorian stuffed shirt. Something, yeah, something like she that. She called Walter, you said Arthur. Oh, I said Arthur. I know. Keep... Happens all the time. Why did I Happens do that? Happens all the time. I don't know why we get those two confused. You know what? Arthur and Walter were in and out, in and out, in and out constantly. This, this yes. episode. So it, it kind of was like. So I think Arthur also came in. Before no, so Maud and Walter are having their argument where um, Walter is basically saying like I do not want some I want so, I want a wife like Walter in no uncertain terms right. wants to be married he wants, he wants to be married. wants to be in another marriage Maud is petrified of that so, also very unusual because usually in you know TV movies it's always the the woman portrayed as the one. Who wants to get married? Yes, and the man doesn't. Again, only speaks to how progressive the show was, right? Um, so Walter ends up yelling, going out the door to yell to the neighbors, yell to the neighbors, screaming to the neighbors, making a scene. Yeah, you know, something about yelling about sin or sanity. <laughs> should we choose sin or sin, should we choose yeah, sanity? Yeah. And he ends up storming off. He ends up leaving, saying, "I'm. I had it written down." Ah, uh, where the heck is it? My handwriting is atrocious. Uh, we have Walter to sign a, you up for steno classes. To, that's right. We have to sign me up for some type of classes. I'm going to go out and find a girl with a 42-inch bust and an IQ of 14. Yes. He ends up going to the bar. Yeah. Well, well, we went to commercial. We went to commercial. We went to commercial. And, and then, then we come back. We're, yeah. back. we're at the present day. It's back to present day. So Maud, Walter, and Arthur and are Arthur on the couch. Are on the couch watching the election. Yes. And, and, re- re- and they go back into the f- another flashback about yes. remembering those, you know, because uh, it was like two weeks yeah. went by after that for them back in 68 where they, they hadn't seen each other. Yeah, well, I think it was a week. I think they said two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks. Yes, because well, yes, Maud said something about um, he, um, uh, or was it Walter said he, he stayed alone for two weeks drinking. Yes. That was the other big thing. That was thing. the other big thing was Walter's drink. I mean, the, the Wal- drinking. Walter's drinking was definitely addressed. Well, in season two, we address Walter's drinking. Yes, but we see it, all these little crumbs. Yes, we see were the deposited crumbs. about about the, uh, the drinking, which... You know, nobody really, nobody thought, nobody no. gave a, nobody, nobody gave a about fig it. about it. No one yes. gave a fig about it. So yes. we get back to the. So what happened was, see what happened was, um, Maud was dating, and Walter was drinking. Was drinking. That that was how it worked. Yes. And Maud ended up having a date with Henry Van Johnson, as played who by was, Van who Johnson, played, who was playing Henry, not Red Skelton, not Red Skelton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to live that one down. No, I won't let you. I know you won't. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Henry is going on and on about, and he called her little lady. Little lady. That that bothered oh, me that was so cringy. much. Uh, I'm like, you cannot call uh, someone like Maud a, a little, little lady. lady. Little lady. No. Um, no. So. Uh, just Maud is exhausted. The date started at six thirty. It was only yeah, because Henry had to get like the the, the chow mein yeah. from the, the you know the before seven o'clock special. Yes, it was the before seven special. The before seven special, and Maud's had a bad day. And oh, he he asked her, "Oh, you, you, are you?" She wants to get rid of him, and he's like asking her, "If you have, you have a headache? It's been a bad day. Humphreys lost the election." Um, there was a lot going on in Maud's world that just yes. was not working out for her. Yes. And she also missed Walter. It was apparent. Yeah. And H- Henry is telling her, you know, that he could, you know, 
he, he fixed wants all of her problems. Yeah, he's got money. The, the, he, he sells the storm windows, and he has his business. And, and she was like... You want me to be your accountant? Yeah, you want me to be your accountant? <laughs> because he's yeah. going over all these things. He's saying, oh, I have the shop. I have this. I have these investments. I have a $100,000 life insurance policy. Like, going over all of these financial intricacies about himself. The only thing they need to determine is where they live. So he wants to know how, how her plumbing is. Uh, <laughs> Her plumbing is fine. Yes, her plumbing is fine. And she turns him down. She's going to become a nun. She's going to become a monk in a monastery. <laughs> I'm, as a matter of fact, I think I have that written down. Was it a nun or a monk? I'm going to become a female monk in a monastery. A female monk. Well, nun, female monk. Female monk in a monastery. Same thing. And then she's pushing him out the door. Literally trying to get him out the door. Out the door. <laughs> and he's like, all like smiles saying, oh, little lady, I'll, I'll see you soon. Call me. Handing, handing her his... Handing her his business card. And, and it's like crushing the door in his hand. Crushes the door in his hand. Poor Van Johnson. Poor Van Johnson. Uh, so then uh, she gets him out. She's pouring herself a drink. And that's when Carol that's comes when Carol in. Carol enters. In, the, that, in that beautiful, beautiful wig. wig. And she was also in a very schoolgirlish outfit. Very yeah. short skirt. Yeah. Form fit. But again, that was... <sighs> oh. The costume department was told to take very much advantage mm-hmm. of Adrienne Barbeau's figure. Figure. Oh, well, you can't blame them. It's true. They were there. So she wants to know about the date, and Maud says that, you know, she, she crushed him in the crushed him in the door, but his teeth were still talking. <laughs> he did just, it was all smile, uh, all smile and all teeth. Yes, and Carol, of course, brings up Walter, because she can tell Maud is miserable, she's not eating, she's not sleeping, um, and, and then it, it goes, she hopes she... <laughs> As a matter of fact, what says before we go to the next scene is, with any luck, he's as miserable as I am. Right. And she starts to cry. Right, right. Um, and That's then we go to... That bar, which we've seen, we, we saw the bar, before. The bar is frequent. The bar is yes. a frequent, the bar is a frequent flyer. Did we see that one previously in, um, was it Doctor Doctor? I believe so. I think so. Whatever bar we see is the same one that, that Walter bar. and Arthur end up in. Right. Um, and even after... Walter's sobriety and whatnot. He mm. still goes to the bar with Arthur just because it's a fun place to hang right. out. And he usually gets, I think he usually orders like a ginger ale or yes. milk or some such thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Well, Walter tells Arthur he's drinking alone and Arthur's like, oh, well, okay, great. I'll join you. Great, I'll join, I'll join you. You can drink alone with me. And we find out that Walter really was and has been as miserable as one because he ended up saying, he I, had one, one date and the, the girl was, uh, uh, was talking about Jefferson Airplane. Yes. And uh, I, I don't remember what he said. I don't remember what he said Something, point, something having to do with aviation. That, you know, just, yeah. Um, and and we, find, we find out that Arthur is the one that introduced Maud and Walter, Maud and Walter to each together. other. And, but, but he's also like, he knew it wouldn't work out. I don't, I don't know how he, how he knew that. And, of course, he's telling Walter he needs... Female diversion. Well, I think uh, there are times I think that writers made Arthur say these things because they just wanted Arthur to really come off as this idiot. Yeah. Like, he's an idiot savant. He's yeah. a doctor, but he's still a fool. Exactly. Um, Not far from the truth. Uh, and and he, he's, he's... Walter fell asleep in his chair watching Mae West movies right? because that... That's what you do when you're depressed. You watch old Mae West movies. You, you drink and you watch. You drink old, and you watch Mae West. West movies. I think that was an allegory for them saying that he was masturbating and just trying to get himself. Oh, could they? They mentioned Mae West. I think like one or two more times in the show in, in a similar fashion. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. You know, there was always a rumor that Mae West was really a drag a dra- queen. A drag queen. Yeah. yeah. That was that actually happened uh, when she came back. When, oh, she really? made, when she made her comeback, so, <laughs> history lesson. Yes. Um, Mae West was pretty much kicked out of Hollywood right before the 1940s. Mm-hmm. Like, her last picture, I think, was in 38, it was either 38 or 40. Mm-hmm. And it was a big flop, and she ended up taking her shows back to Broadway. Mm-hmm. So she went to Broadway, and Broadway was like, eh, you're sort of like box office poison. So wow. she ends up going across the pond. Oh, that's right. So she goes right. to the UK, and she has this big career on stage. Mm-hmm. She brought Catherine was great. She brought, I think, Sex back. She did Diamond Lil. She she brought back all of these shows and whatnot, and then she got to Vegas. Mm-hmm. 
where she put on her big one woman show where she was surrounded by all these gorgeous men. We can go, we can definitely address that later, but when she came back to Hollywood, like she had already, I think she was in Mr. Ed. She was in an episode of Mr. Ed. Oh, I don't even remember that. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of like what other shows she guest starred in. But she tried coming back into Vogue when she was in her 60s. Mm-hmm. And then when she came into her 70s, mm-hmm. people noticed that her face started to change. She was getting old. Right, of course. She was, I think, in her 80s in the 70s. I think so. Could be. So when like she re- when she did Sex Tet and she did, I think that one other, she did, um, oh, what the hell is the name of the movie? Oh, it had Raquel Welch. Myra Breckenridge. Myra Breckenridge. She did Myra Breckenridge. Myra Breckenridge. She got great notices, but people noticed that this wasn't the same Mae West that they fell in love with in the 30s. Well, how could she be? That's she was in years. her right. 70s. Right. She was pushing 80 for gro- yeah. I think she, she passed in 79. Yeah, I think she was she was eighty she was, she was eighty seven or eighty eight at the time. Yeah, she went, she went right up until the end. Yeah, but there were a lot of people that were like asking the asking for the autopsy report. Like, does she have a does she have a penis? Right, right. Like, I know. I can't. I know. I can't. Anyway, back on the phone. We digress. We digress. Uh, so of course Arthur <clears throat> is complimenting Walter because he 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 feels that you know. Walter is a ladies' man, where, where Arthur really Yeah, they isn't. have this, this weird bro conversation where they yes. go back and forth about who's the bigger ladies' man. Right. And, um, like, Walter is saying, no, Arthur, you're the bigger ladies' man. Like, you can just, again, very bro talk. Yes. Very, very bro talk. Yes. I, I, was, I was in and out of consciousness during that conversation. Yeah. But it's like in the movies I, I watch where, where that happens, the two guys usually end up having end sex. End up having sex. Uh. We love that. We do. Uh, one of the funnier lines that Walter said was, Maytag dealers are second only to Paul Newman. Right. First is Whirlpool dealers. Yes, Whirlpool <laughs> dealers are first. That was cute. That was uh, cute. So Arthur um, is still going on about, you know, that, you know, they need female companionship. And that's when Walter gives him his little black book. His little book. black book. Yes. I would never give any of my friends my little black book. Do you have a little black book? I do. You really do? I do. Oh my goodness. It's not in my purse. I keep it next to my nightstand. <laughs> For no, really, I didn't, no good reason. I didn't think young people would keep a little black book. Of course we I figure do. it's all in the phone. No. Isn't it all in the phone? No, absolutely not. I need Your to keep something list. private. I you do. Know. I have a contact oh, you list. Have to know how to, you have to know how to keep that, you know, oh, away from you prying keep, eyes. That's why it's a book. Uh, no one in my house reads. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the, one of the things that I love about oh, my family uh, is that they can't read. Uh, oh my um. goodness! Oh my goodness! We're going to hell for that. <laughs> God will get me for that. Oh. Is what he will do. And, and of course, our Arthur's last line is as he's looking through the book is, "Who's Barbara?" We no, never I mean, do find that. We never find do that find out who Barbara is. We never do find it out. We never do find out who Barbara is. Um, so Walter ends up going back to Maud's house, and right. Maud is like sitting down, kind of bereft. And I think she's also she's still continuing talking to Carol. Um, I don't think. No, I don't no, think Carol went up to bed. I think she's she was yeah already up she was already at that point. So Walter rings the doorbell, and Maud goes, "If that's." Henry, I'm going to kill it. That's Henry with his storm door. Yes. Because before Henry left, he's like, I'm going to give you a free door. I'm going to give you a free storm door free of charge. Right. And that was when she slammed the door yes. in his hand. But um, Walter comes back. Maud goes to the door. And Walter has his jackets with him. Right. One jacket. One jacket. One suit, actually. One, yes, one, one suit. suit. That's what it is. One suit. And he has, I don't know what, what it was, a book or something? Something. something that effect. Photo album. I'm not sure what, but... So he's moving in. He's moving in. And Maud is elated. Right. Maud is so happy because finally this was the compromise that she wanted. She didn't want the marriage, but she wanted the partner. And, and this even makes up for Humphrey losing. It even makes up for Humphrey losing the election. Yes. So again, Maud is just overcome with joy. She's like speechless at one yeah. point, which is very unusual very for unusual Maud. For Maud. It's very unusual for the both of us. The gods are yeah, right. Oh that's for that's for sure. But so, but um, the caveat is there is a catch. She she oh because she's gonna put the suit away 
and tells him to go get the rest of the stuff the out of the, the car. Of car. And that's when he tells her. He says, oh, no, don't worry about it. We'll keep a couple of things here, and I'll keep the rest of my apartment. Mm-hmm. And that triggered Maud. There she goes again. That triggered Maud because yes. Maud was like, but but you're you're moving in here. This is your house as much as it is it this as much as it is mine. And Maud was like, no, this is this is your house. What if we have I think he said a Pier Six fight? Uh, um uh, uh. Some, uh, some sort of some fight. Some sort of fight. Some sort of fight. Like a really big fight. Big and fight. he's, what, and, what is he going to do? Am I, right. Because if she kicks him out, then what is where does he go? He even says, am I going to stay at the Y the for y. a night? Right. And uh, like more just trying to, trying to explain, trying to like go over everything. And Walter's just not having any of that. Right. So I think Walter says something to... Would you be, yes, Maud is like clinging to his jacket, like, no, 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 you're not leaving, not like this, I don't want you to leave, I don't want you to go. And Walter says, no, you're going to ruin my, you're going to wrinkle my jacket. My goes, two, oh, that's my a $200, $200 suit. jacket, $200 yes. suit. Maud's like, I'll fix it, I'll iron it, don't worry about it. And uh, Ma- Walter just comes back at Maud and Maud blows up. Yeah. Here's what I think of your $200 suit. Throws it on the ground. Yes. And, and that's what he says. It's, it's, it's only a fifty dollars suit. You think suit. I'd leave a two hundred dollars suit here? <laughs> Walter wasn't stupid. Uh, and there was also a remark about how they 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 only lived together for two and a half minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so they end up having what I like to call their talking over each other fights. Yes. Where and that's usually what leads to. Walter saying Maud sit or Maud stand or Maud kitchen or Maud whatever. In this case, it was it was Maud coat. Maud coat exactly because Walter has had enough. Maud he knows that he has Maud. Maud knows that she has Walter, and they decide to go to a justice of the peace pretty late at night. Well, Walter made the, dis- Walter made the made decision, decision that they're going to the justice of the peace. They're getting married. That's it. And that was the end of it. And well, no, because Maud starts crying. Yeah, Maud starts and crying as she's going, as she's holding on to her coat. And, and he's and he and he's he's, he's like, well, what, "What are you crying for? What's the matter?" And she says, "As a matter of fact, I have it written down. Proposal is a very romantic moment for a girl, right? And all, all he did, all he did was say, say Maud coat. Yes, but that was that was romantic and enough. That was romantic enough for because her. Maud knew exactly what was going to happen, right?" Exactly. And then we fade to black, mm-hmm. and we open back up to, to pre- present day. Present day, to present 1972. 1972. And still watching the, still watching election. the election. Arthur, Arthur, Maud, Maud, and Walter. Walter on the couch as we go from left to right. And in discussing all of these things that the two have gone through, Maud and Walter are feeling relatively amorous. Yes. They're feeling romantic. And Maud and Walter... Suggest to themselves, hey, well, Walter makes a suggestion. Walter, that they, ma- yes, Walter makes They go suggestion. watch the elections upstairs in, in the bedroom. To which Arthur says, Yeah, sure, that's fine. You guys can go upstairs. I'll stay down here. No, wasn't it something, something more like, oh, oh, no, like, oh, no, oh, no, that's okay. Uh, um, this is fine. Or I don't remember. I don't remember. Something, something. something to that effect that makes Arthur look like an even bigger idiot yeah, than he already it, is. It's, it's like, you know, hello. It's, it's like when, you know, you're on a date or something, and there's like a, a third person there, and it's and it's it's like you know, third wheel in it. Can, third wheel. Can in you it. can you go home now? You know, I've, you, had, I've had that happen to me once or twice. I'm sure. I mean, everybody's I've, I've had that. I've definitely had that happen to me once you or know. twice. Where I think a friend of mine was being amorous with her husband, and I was like looking around, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna go. Okay, now. well, I'm just gonna back up slowly. Just gonna, and, just gonna crab walk right out the door. Yeah. Hello. So, that's how the episode ends. Yes. Really, just... I love how Norman Lear was able to pack so much into, into one, one episode. Yeah, 26 minutes, right? Only that's 26 the, minutes. That's the running time when you edit out all the... When you edit out all the commercials. commercials. And sometimes, sometimes what will happen with some of these episodes is there will be pretty significant portions cut out of it. Mm. Um, but that's just what happens when they try to put it yeah. down in the syndication. They, they edit it yeah. because commercials are cost more money than the shows do. Yeah. That's so. True. Oh, some news. Yes. I had Please reached share. out. I did. I did. I reached out to um, an app called Tubi. 
T-U-B-I. T-U-B-I. And what Tubi is, it's a lot like Netflix and Hulu, but it's free of charge. And it has some older stuff on it. It has, some new, it has I think, like the first season of the Friars Club Roast. Uh-huh. Um, it has some stuff that I'm like really, really, really interested in. Like most of George Carlin's specials whom I absolutely adore. Um, and I reached out to them to potentially get Maud onto Tubi. That's because right. Tubi does have a lot of Shout Factory um, shows. shows. Mm-hmm. And Maud, as we've mentioned in every episode, is that Maud is owned by Shout Factory. Shout Factory. So I am hoping... Because one of the things that happens is a lot of the people that watch our show will say, well, where can we watch more? Yeah, they want to They want to, they want to know Maud. where it is. They want to see where more it is. We can't show it to you. We can't show it to you because the powers that be will say, hey, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Um, our lawyers say, yeah. you better not do that. Correct. To which we say, okay. Okay, we will. <laughs> we'll play ball. Yes. We'll play ball, Daddy. Yes. We'll play ball, Daddy. It's fine. Yes. So I reached out to them hoping that they can get Maud onto their application. And if they can, you can watch Maud on Tubi. Uh, yes. And, if, and of course, if that does happen, we will be the first ones. We will be the first ones to tell you. To tell you. And if you would like to hear more, hear more, I got it right hear this more. time. Yes, hear more. If you would more. like to hear more, you can find yeah. us on God Will Get You For That Walter on our Facebook page. Yes. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Finley's Friendly Appliances. Yes. My name is Tomcat, and you can find me on all forms of social media at that Tomcat and thattomcat.com. And if you would like to follow this gorgeous hunk of man. Oh, come on. I won't. You can <laughs> find them at. <laughs> well, of course, on Facebook, it's. Tony Holm Perman, that's Tony with an I. And of course, you can also follow me at my website, TonyHolmPerm.com. And they can always email us at Finley's Friendly Appliances at gmail.com. Yes. So there is no reason not to. There's no reason not to contact. Not to contact us. Contact us. Hit us up. Talk to us. You know, of course. We would love to give you a shout out on here. As a matter of fact, we got a beautiful shout out on um, Uh, my friends who uh, Brandon and Jeff, who do the That Does Suit Madam podcast, which is a show all about one of my favorite shows. Are you being served? served? Um, and, uh, yes, we want to thank Jeff and Brandon. We want to thank them for the shout-out. We're, shout we're shouting you out now. We're shouting you out. We're shouting them back out. Yes, we are. So. so, thank you for listening, and we will see you on another episode of God Will Get You For That Walter. Yes, he will. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.